Hey guys, well it's been a, been a minute or two since I've done an update on the Lodestar, and, um, but that's not because I haven't been working on it. I've spent the last two weekends, three weekends, working on this thing. Um, got, we're just about done with the lighting and electrical, close. And what else have I worked on? I think that's about it since I did an update, but, and I didn't film any of the process, but <laughs> electrical's kind of boring. It's not, there's not that much to see. Um, so since you don't want to look at me and you want to look at this truck, let me show you what I got done and the few things left to do before the truck show in a couple weeks. All right, so getting everything figured out was more difficult than I expected. So, you know, we're all nice and neat now. Got most of it's loomed and tied off. We got a little piece of tape showing there. Something like that. That's my clothes off for my convoluted tubing. But at any rate, um, so what I ended up doing was this was my feed coming out of the truck. It's the original Fleet Star feed. Um, and then there's actually this feed ran originally out through the back of the cab, bottom of the cab, something like that. That was the feed to the back of the truck. So that's actually what I reused. You can see going, I think you can see that one. So that's going down um, underneath the cab. And that is again, my feed to the back of the truck. This is the feed that includes, you know, that's the engine harness and the front lighting harness. It had this junction block mounted originally to the firewall somewhere over in this area. I just don't really have room with this butterfly hood because it comes down right there. So I remounted that to the fender support. It's a nice little spot for it. And it just worked out really nice to be able to reuse that. The ones I didn't need, I took off, didn't have to have cut wires and um, just works out really nice. So I wish it was a little cleaner looking, but that's okay. Um, so eventually I got all this figured out. So we've got, uh, you know, loomed up reasonably well to the headlights. Um, we've got a feed coming down that goes underneath the uh, radiator cradle and feeds the passenger side. And then the only other feed to their side of the truck is this one. That is for the uh, windshield washer. So you can see that feeds around to that. Man, they just had this lousy tape job there. Man, and feeds up and around across so um what i did find is that i also found some 12 volt hot wires and some other stuff that once i get in the cab i'll show you what i did i did find that the fleet star had separate feeds a brake light feed as well as a left turn and a right turn feed and that'll get important when we get to the back of the truck so anyway though that's the front um inside the cab um, let's see, I'll just kick it on real quick here for you. Let's, let's back you out a little bit so you can see. So, um, able to use the original factory washer button. And you can see, we've got washers. That's cool. And we already had wipers. Um, and we also, I was able to use, I wired this fan in, um, to 12 volt hot so then I'm just using this switch so we've got low and high originally I was going to use a switch on the dash here but I ended up having to use this for the headlights so the way this truck is wired when you even though there's a park lamp position you can see my dash lights come on that position still turned on the headlights it fed you know my, my low beam headlight um, feed so what I ended up doing is I wired this switch in. So when this is on, like it is right now, it's actually a two position switch, so you gotta pull it out just to the first position. When this is on, headlights come on, right? So let's go outside the truck. My lights are on. We've got our side indicator there. And we've got headlights. Hard to see in the sunlight. Um, we've got markers too, other than that one that's got a bad socket that I got to replace. 
Um, I wanted to be able to have just my markers on, my parking lights, whatever you want to call them. So when you turn this switch off, marker lights stay on, all my tails stay on, and my headlights are now off. So that was my workaround, and it actually utilized, you know, factory switches. Um, turn signals, indicators work, turn signals work. Same thing. And actually, on the headlight front, the floor button down here for the brights actually illuminates. I got that all wired in properly. So um, I think that's everything electrical. The only thing that I have, I have not touched heater controls yet. That's for another day. And I've not done the fuel tank sensor, fuel level sensor. So coming back, you see I have not finished. I still have my feeds up to these front two markers on each side. I ran out of um, heat shrink tubing, but see I've got the tails on and we've got working lights all the way back. Same thing over here and then the same thing. I got wires dangling up there for those, just those front four markers. Do that once I get more heat shrink tubing. Um, what I did, flip on a light here so you can see so I've got the cover off I wired everything to a junction block I really like these junction blocks I use these on all the trailers at work um, so we've got you know a feed coming in from the back of this cross member um, and then a feed going out to my right side and a feed going out to my left side you can see it's going to each tail light I've got it loomed up and convoluted tubing and then the marker feeds break out. That's a separate feed all the way back to the junction block, so we don't have splices in that in that tail light brown wire. Um, got my little fancy stainless steel clips, clipping it in, and then I still got actually clip up there, um, and then it runs over to the markers. This side, standing with the light with us. This side feeds around and comes up, and first it feeds my triple markers in back here, and then goes up and over to that light, those two lights, and then feeds up to the front, which I've yet to do. Every splice on this truck has been a true Western Union soldered and heat shrink tubing over top of it. There are no butt splice connectors. I mean, see my electrical toolbox I usually keep in the truck. I love my heat shrink butt splice connectors, but I've wired multiple trucks and trailers with these and they have a lifespan. That lifespan is significantly decreased by the amount of moisture and salt that they see. What you will never see in my toolbox, because I hate them with a fiery passion, are scotch locks. Um, I hate them, can't stand them. They fail almost immediately. They're exposed to um, the elements immediately. At least a heat shrink butt splice connector is, you know, is sealed off somewhat, but they're relying on that, that, you know, that cramp that easily pulls out. Um, especially over time. So I didn't want to have to rewire this again. This is all brand new wire, all brand new, everything, every light, every, every socket, you name it is new and I want good connections. So, um, hence now what you'll see, let me grab my creeper. What I did, sorry, I'm dropping stuff all over. Grab the light here. So that's the feed coming from the front of the truck. That one we talked about that was a separate feed that used to go out the back of the cab. It runs up here. And you see this little box. It's a Hopkins brand, I think. This takes, you can see the red wire up there on the left. That's my brake feed. And then I've got my green left turn, yellow right turn. I'm sorry, other way around. Green right turn, yellow left turn, brown tail, white ground. It's supposed to work and convert those into single feeds. So it's a three signal into two. The ground and the tail light is just a pass through. It doesn't work. It's bad out of the box. Tested it with my multimeter. Um, I've got inputs in on all three wires, no outputs. The only thing that works is the tail light feed and the ground are pass throughs. But right here, I've got nothing. And when I read the reviews on Amazon, there's a whole lot of other people who had the same exact problem. It's just a junk little piece of crap box. So I'm gonna buy a better one and 
have it by next weekend. And luckily I left myself, you can see I left a nice big loom of extra wire. So I've got room to re-splice that. So it's just what we'll do. Um, pisses me off because I drilled holes to mount it. And I guarantee you the replacement box, whatever I get, will not have the same bolt pattern, but it is what it is, minor issues. So, um, but anyway, if it wasn't for that, <laughs> we'd be almost done and just have those, those four splices up front. But, um, but yeah, you can see, just tried to keep it nice and neat, loomed and clipped, Western Union, and, uh, just looking good. Now you'll see, I did run a ground feed to all these lights, these sockets for my two and a half inch round markers. They come with an eyelet for the ground. I've installed these this way on previous builds, previous trucks, and again, they fail. So I've got, everything is grounded to a good, nice big stud up on the firewall. Um, that in turn, feeds back all the way through the frame rail um, and back to my junction box back there so I know that I've got good continuous ground it makes for more splices takes a little longer but it's the only way to do it so um, got quite the mess back here all my tools I'm gonna leave these out because I gotta do this again next weekend anyway but um, yeah there you have it there was one other thing I want to show you guys. Let's turn that stuff off. Um, let me, hold on a second. I have to deal with a little bit of noise. I'm gonna, I've got the airline feeding off my compressor. Let's see what we're up to. Eh, that still only put us at 90 pounds. I want a little more so hold tight all right so we're up at 120 pounds in that tank that's my tank i'm tapped into that feeds the um spring brakes and the air horns so remember when i blew the air horns for you a few videos ago and everyone said yeah they're okay but not very fitting well i did some checking and some playing and i found that when i pulled the chain i had a whole lot of air coming out around here so I took them apart and you can see where I was a little sloppy with my gasket maker and I gasketed everything up. And now we have a little better sound there guys, a little more fitting. Let me turn my valve off here. Um, the only other thing I think I have to update is that upholstery supposed to be done by tomorrow um, so hopefully tomorrow or Wednesday I'll be picking that stuff up um, I've been on them because they've been getting so close to my deadline here but they assured me that it'll be done it might have actually been done this past Friday but I didn't have time to go get it and told them I wouldn't bother with it till Tuesday so um, other than cleaning that's the last step um, kind of I did buy a new polisher nice dewalt wheel and i got some compound and stuff and i'm gonna wheel um just gonna use i'm not gonna use the actual true compound i'm gonna use some light more fine cut cleaner just to get rid of some of the smudges from where i wiped when i did my lettering so just gonna do those doors a little bit here and there some smudge spots and then this winter we'll do paint correction on the clear coat and uh, do some wet sanding and some good wheeling and then wax the heck out of it and be ready to go. So that's it for today, guys. I think that's a quick little update. Um, I am going to round up a new tail light converter or yeah, turn signal converter, whatever you want to call it, and some more heat shrink tubing. And that way, um, this weekend, we can spend a couple hours finishing up the electrical and an hour or so doing some wheeling and get this thing out and get it washed, get the seats installed and be ready to load it up on the trailer. It does look like my new trailer is not gonna be in unless it comes in, shows up in Michigan in the next four days-ish. Um, so I've got uh, my father-in-law's uh, big Tex goose neck lined up, so I'm gonna go pick that up Friday after work and um, just do a pressure check and adjust the brakes and be ready to hit the road with it here and, and uh, shoot, it's only we're leaving 
Friday morning. So we're talking 10, 11 days before this thing hits the road. So thanks for watching as always. And uh, we're in the home stretch.